Hey guys, in this video I'm going over how to build the perfect stock portfolio and to do that we're taking the best stock from each of the 11 different sectors of the S&P 500 index. Yesterday's video for Tech Stocks on Fire was a lot of fun to create and that's because all 10 of those stocks were on fire. When I looked at the remaining sectors it wasn't as exciting so I decided to condense this series down into this video where we take the best stock from each sector and I think that's going to be a lot faster and better for everyone. What are the advantages of a diversified portfolio? Number one, you protect your portfolio from the unexpected. And if 2020 has taught us anything, it is to definitely expect the unexpected. And number two, a diversified portfolio helps us to limit our downside risk. Yesterday I tested a new video format and ran a poll and 77% of you preferred the new format to the old. So that's what we're going to run with. With a new format, I'm including the scorecard from the Beast Mode Stock Analysis. And for those of you that want the full Beast Mode Stock Analysis, it's available in my Patreon. And once you do the full Beast Mode, you're never going to want to trade without it. And today I've got a new poll to see if you prefer the light or the dark background for the Weeble charts. Please let me know which one you prefer. Let's start today with a quick glance at the Beast Mode spreadsheet so we can compare all of these stocks' performance side by side and look at their P.E. ratios. Then we'll jump into the rest of the stocks. Welcome to the Beast Mode Stock Analysis Spreadsheet. We're not going to spend much time in here today and we may not be in the future due to the new format, but let's go over things really quickly. We've got GPS, which is the gap. They are in the consumer discretionary sector of the S&P 500 and their return over three months is 61%. And I want to do the Beast Mode today so you can see the side by side comparisons, which I think is really helpful when we're looking at their stock performance as well as the P.E. ratio. We have UPS, which is 60.52% return over three months, and their P.E. ratio is 31.37. AMD has a 63% return over three months, and their P.E. ratio is 165. They also have a beautiful return over one year and two years. We have FCX, which is in the materials sector of the S&P 500, at 61.57% over the last three months, and they're currently a negative 32 on the P.E. ratio. We have ABMD, which is in the healthcare sector, a 47.35% return over three months with an 86.91 P.E. ratio. We have AES in the utilities sector with a 40.14% return over the last three months and a P.E. ratio of 62.63. Warehouser in the real estate sector with a 34.37% return over three months and a P.E. ratio of 70.86. Church and Dwight Company, which is ticker CHD in the consumer staples sector, a 31.86 return over three months and a 32.95 P.E. ratio. We have Viacom in the communications sector with a 28.02% return over three months and a 12.95 P.E. ratio. We have Halliburton in the energy sector with a 30.18% return over three months and a negative 3.5 P.E. ratio. And CNIF is not shown. It is in the financial sector, and we'll go over them with the scorecard later on. And now let's cover each of the stocks individually. These images are from my free tools at jerryrollmine.com, where in a matter of minutes you are taught proper risk management, how to research stocks, how and when to exit trades, and given a free stock portfolio with your custom trading plan. All fast and free. Check it out. Our first stock today is ticker GPS. It's in the consumer discretionary sector of the S&P 500, and Gap is a worldwide clothing and accessories retailer. In the news, Gap hits highs after analysts doubles their price target. Citigroup upgraded Gap stock from neutral to buy and doubled its price target to $24 per share. When we look at the charts, we can see that it is in a nice uptrend. It recently took off a little bit, and this light blue line here, that is the 20-day simple moving average. The bottom line is the 50-day simple moving average. One of the things we can do is whenever the stock is trading in an upward channel, we can watch the 20-day simple moving average and buy whenever it touches or gets very close to that average and bounces back. The analysts currently have gap rated as a hold. When we look at the beast mode scorecard, the P-E ratio is currently negative 7 .9. It's got a year-to-date stock gain of 2%. It has a three-month return of 61%. The tattle ratio is 1.22. The revenue growth is negative 10.4. The operating margin is 2.6. The net income margin is negative 5.5. And the levered free cash flow is 3%. Gap, like many other companies, was hit hard by the pandemic. And the important thing to look at here is the return over three months because it is in recovery mode. And that return has been 61%. 
Our second stock is ticker UPS. It's in the industrial sector, and this is the United Parcel Service Company, which is a multinational package delivery and supply chain management company. In the news, we have the Motley Fool, the proven winner. UPS has proven that it can grow its top and bottom lines even in a pandemic. The blowout quarter two extends an impressive five-year run for UPS that has featured a 25% increase in annual revenue, a 33% increase in adjusted net income, and a 32% increase in the dividend it pays. A quick look at the chart, we can see that it is in an upward trend. It's currently consolidating right now, and I would wait for it to break out of this consolidation, hopefully to the upside, before getting into this stock. UPS is currently rated a moderate buy. It has a P.E. ratio of 31.4. The tattle ratio is 1.08. The revenue growth is 6.7%. The operating margin is 7.3%. The net income margin is 5.7%, and the levered free cash flow is 13.4%. The third stock in our perfect portfolio is one of my favorites, and that is ticker AMD, and this is in the information technology sector, and Advanced Micro Devices is a semiconductor company that develops computer processors and related technologies for business and consumer markets. In the news, AMD stock is the S&P 500 champion. Here's how to play it. AMD stock was the best performer in the S&P 500 in 2018 and 2019. It is rare for one stock to have such a repeat performance, so it is a bad idea to bet against Advanced Micro. From Street Lightning, on Tuesday, Piper Sandler raised their price target for AMD from $82 to $100 while reiterating their overweight rating. The analysts believe AMD could see significant upside based on AMD's new chips. This stock has had a 50% rise since July, and one big reason to choose AMD stock over NVIDIA, AMD's huge console opportunity. AMD has been chosen by Microsoft and Sony to provide central processing units and custom GPUs for their upcoming consoles. The console graphics hardware market is expected to generate $17.3 billion in revenue next year, according to John Petty Research, a jump of nearly 39% over 2020's estimated sales. A quick look at the chart shows a nice upward trend. We can also see that when this trend really took off, they had really high volume, which is a good thing, and it looks like the MACD is about to do a crossover, and that will be a bullish sign when it happens. The analysts currently have AMD rated as a moderate buy. The P.E. ratio is 165.8. The return over three months is 63%. The tattle ratio is a nice 2.01. The revenue growth is 30.1%, and that is quite impressive. The operating margin is nice at 11.6%, and the S&P 500 average is 10.8%, so anything above that we consider to be good. The net income margin is 8%, and the levered free cash flow is 11.2%. I might also add that we've got a lot more data in the full beast mode analysis. If you're interested in that, check out my Patreon page. The fourth stock is ticker FCX. It's in the materials sector, and Freeport is a mining company that operates large, long-lived, geographically diverse assets with significant reserves of copper, gold, and molybdenum. Oh boy, that's a tongue twister. FCX is the world's largest publicly traded copper producer. In the news, can Freeport stock rise to the top of the basic materials sector? FCX received an overall rating of 90, which means that it scores higher than 90% of the stocks. Additionally, Freeport scored an 84 in the basic materials sector, ranking it higher than 84% of the stocks. If we take a quick look at the chart, we can see that they've got a very nice, long, upward trend going, and Freeport is currently rated a moderate buy. It has a P.E. ratio of 32.8. The tattle ratio is 1.74. The revenue growth is down 18.9% over the last 12 months. Their operating margin is a little skinny at 3.4%. Their net income margin is negative 4.9%, and their levered free cash flow is 6.6%. Number five is ticker ABMD, and this is in the healthcare sector, and Abiomed is a medical devices company that manufactures the circulatory support device Impella, which is the world's smallest heart pump. In the news, here are the S&P 500 stocks to buy for growth and value, and we've got AMBD coming in as one of the top 10, and their year-to-date gain is 79%. The analysts currently have them rated as a moderate buy, and my favorite part is the Beast Mode scorecard. We've got a P.E. ratio of 86.9. Turn over three months is very nice at 47%. Their revenue growth is 0.1%. Their tattle ratio is really high at 8.46. That is really nice. Their operating margin is 28%, which is much higher than the S&P 500 average of 10.8%, so that's a really big plus for them. The net income margin is 19.9%, and their levered free cash flow is 35.3%.
Our sixth stock is ticker AES and it's in the utilities sector and AES Corporation is a Fortune 500 company that generates and distributes electrical power. AES is headquartered in Arlington, Virginia and is one of the world's leading power companies generating and distributing electric power in 15 countries and employing 10,500 people worldwide. In the news, did you miss AES 61% share price gain? The AES Corporation price is up 61% in the last three years, clearly besting the market return of around 37%, not including dividends. A quick look at the chart shows they're in a nice uptrend and you'll notice that's a theme for me. I love stocks that are in an uptrend because you don't want to fight the trend. The trend is your friend. The analysts currently have AES rated as a strong buy. Their PE ratio is 62.6. The tattle ratio is 1.16. Their revenue growth is down 9.3% over the last 12 months. Their operating margin is 21.9%, which is really nice. Their net income margin is a little skinny at 2% and their leverage free cash flow is very nice at 22.9%. Our seventh stock today is ticker WY. It's in the real estate sector, and this is Warehouser. I know this company really well because I grew up in the Northwest, so I've been on a lot of different Warehouser land. They are an American timberland company which owns nearly 12.4 million acres of timberland in the U.S., and they manage an additional 14 million acres under long-term licenses in Canada. They also manufacture a variety of wood products. In the news, moving average crossover alert. So this is a little bit of technical analysis for us. Recently, the 50-day moving average for Warehouser broke out above the 20-day simple moving average, suggesting a short-term bullish trend. This has already started to take place as the stock has moved higher by 9.1% in the past four weeks. Plus, the company currently has a Zacks rank number two, which is a buy rating, suggesting that now could definitely be the time for this breakout candidate. If we take a look at the chart, we can see that it is moving up, and our moving averages that we're looking at today are the 20 and the 50, where we just referenced a 50 and a 200, and you can set up your moving averages to whatever you like. I personally like the 20 20 and the 50, so that's what we're showing here. We can also see the RSI and the MACD below for a little bit more information. Warehouser is currently rated a moderate buy. Their PE ratio is 7.9. The return over three months is 34%. Their tattle ratio is 2.02. Their revenue growth is down 4.4%. Their operating margin is 10.9%, and their net income margin is 4.7%. They do have a healthy levered free cash flow of 16.1%. Number eight is ticker CHD, and this is in the consumer staple sector. And Church and Dwight is a major American manufacturer of household products, and they're best known for the Arm & Hammer line, which includes baking soda and a variety of products made with it. In the news from Seeking Alpha, we can see the best performing S&P 500 stocks in the sector in one month are Church and Dwight. No surprise there, that's why we chose them. And for the charts, I threw up a black chart here because I want you guys to answer the poll whether or not you prefer the dark or the light for the Weeble charts. Here we can see that it is up very nice. We've got a very good upward channel. It's currently consolidating. And when a stock breaks out of consolidation, it's most likely to return to the trend it was in before it was consolidating. So hopefully when it breaks out, it'll hit new highs and then go back on the upward trend. And just for a comparison between the black and the white charts, here is the white chart so you can see the difference. So please make sure you answer that poll for me. And CHD is currently rated a moderate buy by the analyst. It has a PE ratio of 33. The return over three months has been 32%. The tattle ratio is 1.76. The revenue growth for the last 12 months is 8.4%. The operating margin is a very strong 20.7%. The net income margin is 15.7%, which is also strong. And their levered free cash flow is 24.2%. Our number nine stock today is ticker VIAC, and this is in the communications sector of the S&P 500 index, and it's Viacom CBS, which is a multinational mass media conglomerate formed through the merger of CBS Corporation and Viacom back in December of 2019. In the news, we have 10 cheap overlooked stocks with plenty of upside. Barron screened the S&P mid-cap 400 using FactSet for the 10 companies with the lowest price-to-earnings ratio based on projected 2020 results, and we have Viacom coming in as one of the winners. For the chart, we can see they are in an upward trend. There is a nice channel underneath, and they just bounced off the 20-day SMA, so hopefully it's going to continue to move up. Viacom is currently rated as a moderate buy by the analyst, and the Beast Mode scorecard has a P.E. ratio of 13, which is very nice and low, so that's something I really like on it. Their return over three months has been 28%. Their total asset versus total liabilities ratio is 1.41. The revenue growth is down 22.6% over 
over the last 12 months. Their operating margin is 15.8%, the net income margin is 5.2%, and their levered free cash flow is 4.5%. Our 10th stock today is ticker HAL, and this is in the energy sector, and Halliburton is an American multinational corporation and one of the world's largest oil field service company with operations in more than 70 countries. Pretty impressive. Should Halliburton company stock be in your portfolio? The 44 rating Investors Observer gives to Halliburton company stock puts it near the top of the energy sector. And a quick look at the chart shows that it is currently in an upward trend, although it has broken the 20-day SMA and just touched on the 50-day SMA. SMA. So when I see this chart, I would be waiting for a better buying opportunity and I would want to see this stock come back up over the 20-day SMA before I was interested in buying it. Analysts currently have Halliburton rated as a moderate buy. The Beast Mode scorecard is giving a PE ratio of negative 3.5. Their return over three months has been a respectable 30%. Their tattle ratio is 1.33. The revenue growth is down 20.2% and that's not a surprise given that the entire sector is down. Their operating margin is 3.4 the net income margin is negative 21.4% and the levered free cash flow is 15.1%. So this is a potential play if it gets back over the 20-day SMA and you're bullish on this sector. And our 11th and final stock today is ticker CINF. It's in the financial sector, and it took a little bit of digging to find a good stock in this sector. And this is Cincinnati Financial Corporation, and they offer property and casualty insurance in the USA. In the news, three unknown but amazing dividend stocks. The dividend yield on this is 3.06%, and Cincinnati Financial is largely unknown to many investors, but when it comes to its dividend, it stands out. The property and casualty insurance company founded in 1950 has raised the dividend every year for for the past 37 straight years. That qualifies it as a dividend aristocrat, which refers to the stocks that have had more than 25 consecutive years of dividend hikes. A quick look at the chart shows it was in an uptrend. It's currently consolidating. So if I was looking for a buying opportunity, I would want to see this tick back up to the upside. Cincinnati Financial is currently rated as a hold, to which I would agree, and the Beast Mode scorecard shows a P.E. ratio of 22.7. The tattle ratio is 1.57. The revenue growth for the last 12 months is down 3.4%. The operating margin is 10.8%, which is exactly the S&P 500 average. The net income margin is 8.6%, and their levered free cash flow is 20.8%. The Perfect Stock Portfolio is a work of art and an ongoing process. Today we put together that portfolio by taking the best of the best from each sector of the S&P 500 index. And I'm confident that these are the types of stocks you can put in your long-term investment portfolio that you're going to be very happy with over time. And all of the scorecards today are from the Beast Mode Stock Analysis Spreadsheet. And if you'd like to get the full spreadsheet, check out my Patreon page. If you want a copy of my Beast Mode Spreadsheet, it's available on my Patreon page. And there's a special bonus section with valuable information just for Patreons. The cost is only $20 per month, and it's packed with value to help make you a better investor. And here are a few other things you might want to check out. Number one, go to jerryromine.com. I've got all kinds of free tools there to help make you a better investor. And I built that website for my YouTube viewers. So check it out and enjoy it. There's a lot of great stuff there. Plus, I've got the videos organized where they're a little easier to follow. And if you want to learn fundamental analysis and technical analysis, it's much easier there. Number two, take advantage of Webull's offer where you get two free stocks valued up to $1,400 when you sign up and fund an account. This offer is going away at the end of this month, so if you haven't done that yet, you might want to check it out. And number three, check out Webull's Desktop 4.0. The link is in the description below. It's completely free to use, and they've got some really cool stuff in it. The reason Webull is ending their two free stock promotion is because they're trying to transition from a company that's known for two free stocks to a mainstream stock brokerage. I really think they're going to continue to get better and better, and they're definitely worth checking out. I really hope you appreciate these videos, and today I'd like to ask you to do two things. Number one, can you answer the poll for me and let me know if you prefer the light or dark Weeble charts? And number two, please like, subscribe, and comment. The more YouTube love you give the channel, the more it helps the algorithm, which helps this channel to get discovered. I really appreciate it. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and I'll see you soon on a fresh new video.